this is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net and today I'm going to be looking at a game from Bosna Kings Tournament 2011, Magnus Carlsen with white and Hikaru Nakamura with black. And so unfortunately it always seems that Carlsen gets the better of Nakamura and this game really kind of, uh, I, I think, really shows how Carlsen does it. You know, Nakamura is a very creative player, extremely aggressive, but you know, his shortcoming against the top two or three in the world can be that he's over-aggressive and overextends his position. And so a player with a deeper understanding of the position, a lot of times Carlson will kind of beat back the first wave of attack from Nakamura um, and kind of attack from a, a position of strength. So, you know, this is the Queen's Gambit here. And uh, nothing too crazy, although Carlson goes for an early exchange, and he plays bishop f4. So I, I think um, Victor Korsnoy used to play this line a decent amount in the early 70s. And it's an interesting line. You know, why definitely get the bishop to an active spot uh, instead of a typical maybe knight f3 there. And so with c6, just a standard line, avoiding maybe knight to b5. And so queen c2, the point... It's very clear that with c6, black's also defending the d5 pawn. And so he's getting ready to play bishop f5. You know, if black had played bishop f5 here, just queen to b3, and white is going to be winning a pawn. So c6, I mean, that's that's another point. He's getting ready to play bishop to f5. And so white stops him. And I think there's some lines here where black can play g6. You know, he really wants to play bishop f5. But Nakamura played a kind of a weird move. He played bishop to g4 and bishop to h5. So it's just kind of like this is he's recognizing this is going to be a bad piece for him. And he just wants to trade it off immediately and try to put all his pawns on white squares. And so Carlson just develops, gives him double pawns, and castles queenside uh, very fast before black is going to be able to maybe open the c file. And so knight f6, pretty standard. Um, here, Carlson played f3. I guess uh, knight e2 is probably the same thing um, because, you know, if black really wants to go after the bishop with knight h5, he could try. Although maybe white has bishop to e5 there. Um, as f6, you know, is it possible? So just an idea. And, and you could think maybe, you know, knight d7 here is not really threatening anything, g4. So anyway, knight h5 is probably not a good move, so whatever. Carlson plays f3. We know he wants to play e4. Maybe his idea is he just wants to roll the pawns as fast as he can. And so he does finish development with knight to e2. And so Nakamura finally gets, um, gets you know, trying to make some threats here with b5 and, and at least displace White's uh, White's knight and certainly wants to play c5 if he can. And so d4, White is playing in the center. And so this game was interesting because we could see here Black with uh, d takes e4 is kind of giving up his, he, he's giving up his entire center because he was going to get pushed back with e5 in a move. You know, let's just say queen here, we have e5. You know, if this knight goes to h5, it's just not going to work. I mean, white's going to have g4 all day. The knight is going to be trapped. So because of just kind of very direct play in the center, extremely flexible play by Carlson, Nakamura is forced to concede in the center and give white these mobile pawns. Now white can break with anything. So moving forward, uh, black tries queen a5. And so we can see, you know, black's position is not very harmonious. And uh, I think he's actually sacking the pawn here with c6, but it'd be very dangerous to accept this by Carlson. In fact, I, I think he's just going to lose a piece or something. I mean, this is just it's just too sketchy. So with queen a5, just activating the queen, and he really wants to play c5. Just king b1, and so now he castles. Um, if c5 immediately, probably just d5. You know, this is important that this type of... Um, you know, pawn push or whatever you want to call it, break is um, is keeping the position closed for white, not not opening the c the c file here. So going back, he castles, um, and you know, again, I mean, even though white's knight is on a four, still con controlling the c five square, and uh, white white just has a much more harmonious position. 
you know, it seems like his pieces are, he doesn't have many loose pieces. They're all working together well. Carlson with h4. Um, maybe he wants to put the bishop on g5. Something with e5. Uh, h4, I mean, I guess he's just trying to be aggressive, too. Maybe he wants to play knight g3 and h5, too. And here he plays e5. Um, he's not even going to let black put pressure on this pawn. I mean, I, I think knight g3 is interesting, but maybe maybe it allows knight h5. And by simplifying and taking with the pawn, I mean, this actually looks pretty good for black. He's going to clamp down on the, the king side pretty quick. So maybe that's the problem with knight to g3. So he plays e5. Nakamura, knight d5, trying to stay centralized. You know, again, a knight on the rim is dim, right? The knight's probably going to get trapped. So bishop, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, so not, he didn't even move the bishop here. He just played h5. So just to, to reiterate, you know, it was here, Carlson pushed. Nakamura goes to the center, taps the bishop, and Carlson just plays h5. So pretty cool plan. You know, he just plays h4, e5, h5. And now white has very good counterplay. The only problem in his position really is the knight on a4. But the knight, you know, it's tough for, for black to exploit this. And also, um, you know, maybe white is going to play rook d3 and lift the rook or something. Or maybe even rook to h3. Something that I think would have been interesting here after h5. I don't know. I, was, I wanted to say b3. You know, because if you take, then black is at least getting a square. But, and, it, and if you take with the queen, I mean, now you can even take here or h5 or g5 here. Uh, and you get the open b file. So just some food for thought. I mean, I, I think the b3 move would have been a good, wish, <laughs> good intermediate move here. So h5, um, black plays g5. And now h6. So Carlson just... Ignores it, the piece is hanging, and realizes he's got he controls the h7 square. And if he can open the h file, you know, like I'm saying, I mean rook d3, rook h3, he can he can get some heavy pieces over there really fast. So h6 forces g6. If he takes the piece, he's just gonna take here. And you know, okay, he sacked a piece, but how do you stop getting mated? Knight f6, I guess. You know, th this is probably the only move. Um, to try to control this square, and you're still probably going to get mated. I mean, this is just crazy. I mean, even positionally, we can just say white is going to win. So this was nice. A, a really cool plan by Carlson with the h4 and e5, and combining it all. So black goes g6, so he's doing anything he can to keep the h file closed. White just goes back, he's defending his king. And so Nakamura gets some counterplay. You know, he picks on the loose knight. Uh, he definitely doesn't want to take this because it would allow Black's a, a file to become open here. And so that would be very good for Black. So instead, knight c5, you know, again, trying to stop Black from opening lines. So he takes. And so now Nakamura plays b3. And maybe I, I just feel like it would have been timed a little better earlier because now uh, it's just not going to be as fast to open the b-file. So he takes with the queen. Now after queen takes and knight to d4, so just really going as fast as he can to build up the attack. There's really no way to defend the e5 pawn anyway. So knight d4 to round up g5 with the knight. And basically white's plan is very clear. Strategically his king is pretty safe, although black does have the open b-file. He's got his knights kind of hanging out. But no immediate threats. And white wants to take on g5. He wants to push h7. Then he wants to put his bishop on this diagonal. And basically he'll win the game if he can do that. Meanwhile, black is going to have to be creative. And he's going to have to try to stop white from doing that. And it's basically he just wants to create threats against white's king on the b file. So he plays rookie too. I mean, an active rook. This is nice. Um, white takes on g5. And so now queen e7, I think Nakamura realized, hey, I'm not getting there on offense. This is kind of a problem with when he timed b3 is because he couldn't play rook to b8. And now if he plays rook b8, 
it's like his knight would be pinned, right? I mean, he can't even just, just say whatever white does. I mean, the knight is pinned. The rook is going to be unprotected on b8. So maybe playing b3 earlier would have been better because now the queen is just kind of really active here, and he's, he's starting to creep on the f7 pawn. So now we can see queen d3. Okay, maybe he's planning something on um, g6. Also, he's leaning on the rook. And so black just decides to cover himself on f7. And so now we see some, some pretty concrete threats. Um, rook takes f7 is definitely the idea. Let's just say something like uh, c5. I think rook, rook takes f7 or possibly uh, knight takes. Just a sample line. This check. Okay, if king here, you know, the game's over. And if king here, this is really a pretty cool line. Uh, maybe just h7. And there's there's no way to stop the pawn. So really, really nice attack by Carlson. At this point, Nakamura realized f7 was weak, and also the rook is hanging. But, you know, this so much pressure... Just everywhere. Not to mention the idea of b3 and this bishop becoming a monster. So black is probably busted here. He plays f5. g4 is a very natural move. And now we can see the queen very well placed. Played knight a4. Maybe you can make a case knight to b4 is a better move. I mean, it looks better, but, you know, it's It's sketchy. And maybe it just loses on the spot to h7 and queen d4 check. Um, that just loses on the spot because when the queen moves, you just take off the knight. So again, I mean, I think black is just busted. Knight, knight b4 here just loses on the spot. Uh, f5 is definitely dropping. The g file is going to open. Um, but it was instructive how, how, how Carlson finished the game. So knight a4, he's trying to... Uh, maybe he wants to lift the knight towards the center or at least put some pressure. So queen d4 is a nice move. Threatens h7, which is basically game over. The knight is too loose. So queen to e5. And this was a really nice move by Nakamura. The first time I looked at the game, I was like, okay, so why didn't he just take the knight? You know, it looks like queen d4 was just crushing. Right? I mean, the, the knight is loose. Right? Queen d4. You're threatening h7. It's basically made you win the queen. And the knight is loose. Uh, but queen to e5 is really clean because if he takes knight to c3 check, so you're forking, forces a capture, and now check, leading to mate. So this, this was just nasty. These were pretty solid tactics. So queen d4, so Nakamura buys himself time. You know, basically, I mean... Um, this is looking pretty good. I mean, queen here just loses, right? You know, you're going to get mated. So he's got to take it. Now he takes on f5. But again, strategically, why this play such a solid game? Even though the material is dead even, this knight is very loose. It could be subject to possibly uh, rook h4. You know, even though it looks like in this type of position, you know, b3, all this check is really going to just shut it down. White's kind of timed that very well, and, and honestly, I think the idea of rook h4 is really nice because you're just getting a, a, a knight off of there, of, of c3, and then you're going to play b3, bishop b2, and that's going to be game over. So uh, Carlson goes knight f3 here. He goes a different route. I guess if rook, rook here, maybe he's got um, this push. Maybe this is strong right away. So knight f3. Uh, Black is trying to defend, throws a check, and here king h7 is a big mistake. Uh, I think he had to go king to uh, h8 here. And again, it's still probably, it's still busted because you have knight h4. And in this position, um, white is going to win an exchange by force with knight g6. I mean, there's no way to stop it. There's a triple fork threat. So Black is already busted. Uh, if king f7, I mean, I would imagine this simply h7 would do the trick. Um, followed by just basic pressure. Bishop h6, knight g5, this b3 idea, this rook h4. I mean, white just has all the, all the moves. So what happened in the game, 
after king to h7, white plays a check. And so very simple idea. If he takes, takes, is check, and after you take, you're going to lose an exchange. And the position is just too loose. I mean, you could try to play this out. You know, white is going to throw some extra checks in there, and it's not going to work. Down an exchange, you're, you're just busted. So here after check, who's the king? And now rook to g1. I mean, if knight h4 here, maybe he's going to get away. Right? And, and there's no... Uh, this, this check, you know, all of a sudden doesn't work. So it looks like black is going to be okay, but rook h2 one. So Carlson again, just very methodical, building the pressure, and he's going to come in on g6. You know, I think that should be pretty clear. And if he can't, he's still strategically, I mean, he just needs to get his bishop on this diagonal, which he's almost definitely going to be able to do. Black just doesn't have any activity, and here after knight h4. Um, Nakamura took and here he resigned so this was a really cool game I mean you can see a lot of traps a lot of puzzles set for the opponent to solve you know it's all about pressure you can see like every move from the very start I mean the opening was weird especially by Nakamura uh, but I think it was very instructive Carlson got the big center then just kept going straight for the attack and, and pushing Nakamura back on his heels but always Carlson was very solid very strong foundation in, in uh, the defense of his king. So this is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net, and thanks for tuning in.